the first question I have about autonomous driving is that there's so much talk about when autonomous driving is going to really become a reality. Uh, so um, a friend of mine actually made a joke that if you ask autonomous driving investors, and they're going to say five years, and then you ask the funders, they'll say about 10 years. And you ask their VP of engineering, they say about 15 years. So everyone have different perspective. Uh, so I would like to ask the panel, uh, panelists, and what's your point of view? When do you think it's going to really become something that happened to a daily life? Wow. I thought, uh, you know, people will say two years. <laughs> so I was thinking to say five years, I think that's uh, reasonable. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, honestly speaking, I, I think that's really depend on the applications, mm -hmm. right? If you talk about uh, L4 level, uh, then uh, I think at least the five years. Let's talk uh, about level four. Level four, level okay. Four. Yeah, level four, um, the problem, uh, yeah, I think now um, most of the companies they have solved uh, about like a 90, 95 percent mm. of the problem. If you look at uh, what has been demonstrated by Nvidia and uh, others, um, but I, I think for any engineering problem, the last uh, 10, 5 percent is uh, really difficult. Always take uh, much longer uh, than people expected. Uh, so. Uh, I think it will take uh, roughly maybe like five years, five to 10 years, and uh, maybe start from some uh, uh, special applications like a taxi, you know, those, but uh, for uh, our common people like a driver, automatic, uh, autonomous car, I think that probably 10 years from now. So you're optimistic. Okay. So by the way, there is no, uh, you can specify whether you think it's US market or China or any other markets because, you know, the timing may be a little bit different. Go ahead, Tiffany. So I would add, I think part of the, I think part of what's driving the differences and answers you're getting is just the definition of what commercialization means. Mm -hmm. So with all new and emerging technologies, I think it's important to define what do we mean by commercialization. Mm -hmm. And like all new and emerging technologies, it will come in phases. So I think my point of view is, you know, we'll see some very early applications starting already this year in terms of fleet operation, ride hailing, things like that in geofenced areas. Mm -hmm. You might see some shuttles, for example, operate in fixed route geo low speed applications and so those are kind of early and conservative forms of autonomous L4 autonomous driving uh, I think if you're if you define commercialization as when can I as a consumer go to my dealership and purchase a fully autonomous vehicle that's sometime in the future but you're absolutely right so our our engineers are typically more conservative yeah. than uh, you know some of our investors or some of our founders uh, what about automaker because pony AI works with automakers as yeah, well right? so for for those who don't know pony AI is a startup co-located here in the Bay Area as well as in China and we basically build the full stack autonomous software for L4 autonomy so you can think of that as fully autonomous vehicles. Uh, and so when we, we, we do partner with OEMs, we also are now operating a fleet in China, in, in, a, in Guangzhou, in a small geofenced area. Uh, so automakers, I think, because they're subject to very strict regulations and the, the traditional industry of selling to a consumer, you know, requirements like automotive grade, that will set the timeline it will push it out by a number of years. But so I think we'll, we'll see fleets and ride, ride hailing, ride sharing applications much sooner in the next five years before we see cons vehicles that are gonna be able to be purchased by you know, your average consumer. You, when you talk about fleet, are you talking about um, uh, uh, like trucking or are you talking about tr trucking I think is yeah freight is another application that we may see come sooner than kind of the application the uh, consumer vehicles yeah. but with freight I think the technology problem is a little bit different than what you might see in an urban or a suburban environment uh, yeah because I guess with long distance driving and, and free in high speeds mm -hmm. uh, the requirements for your sensors requirements for your algorithms are slightly slightly different uh, than in urban and suburban environments, but at the same time, the core technology is still very much, there's a, there's a big overlap. Got it. Thank you. Dong Yan, do you want? Uh, I think the, the autonomous driving side is depending on the definition, right? If we are talking about there is a car and with uh, people inside, 
Uh, that's very different than you have autonomous driving car in a port or in a confined environment for industrial applications. So I think those applications will see much early adoption in a confined, restricted environment, fixed route, uh, less people, uh, less corner cases, uh, worse the passenger um, taken uh, vehicles, which really a proof of the last mile is the hardest, right? It's really about the last mile, the corner cases. Um, it's also reflect a, a general issue of the artificial intelligence because when we're talking about the a general artificial inte general intelligence, it's very, very hard. I don't personally see that happen in the next five to 10 years. The general intelligence, uh, for example, like natural language processing. But if you're talking about uh, NLP for a very, very narrow domain, very ca uh, case, and same thing for Thomas driving for a very narrow use case, I think will happen as soon as this year. Um, you know, in industrial applications. Uh, so that's why uh, it's interesting. Our investment fund for the last six years, we have one of the principles: we never invest in autonomous driving with people inside. Uh, we did invest in uh, technology or companies without people inside, right? Um, one last thing is I think this... Uh, Sorry, uh, just to clarify, when you say there is no people inside, mm -hmm. uh, you talked about Tom's driving, but in, for example, warehouses and other places. Yeah, warehouse, port, uh, this is a confined route you can pretty much program to a large extent. Yeah and you don't see too many complications like the Tesla, Tesla case last year, the death case, right? You have a white truck coming from the opposite lane and then drive over to your lane against the sun, a white truck, and then the person driving the Tesla is watching Harry Potter, right? So those kind of cases, I don't think any engineer or even user exp experience design person can even dream of, right? A white truck driving over and then stop in the, in the middle of the lane. I think those cases just come back to the AI case, if you don't see the data and use cases, you just cannot imagine, right? But those cases are very hard to, number one, define the case, and number two, collect the data, right? So, so I, th I think from that angle, the last 001% of the autonomous driving with people inside is going to be very hard for most of the companies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Michael. Okay, I think it's, um, it's a hard question, you know. It depends on what kind of dri driving this car we lead to sell to the market. You know, there are so many de debates, uh, you know, someone said that maybe it in late uh, 2020, maybe another two or three decades. Uh, you know, I, I don't think the technology is a problem uh, because, um, you know, we have, you know, the cruise control and anti scheme brake system have been widely adopted. And uh, also the next time, maybe the next step is the lane change assistant and the uh, free freeway driving test. Um, but, uh, you know, um, because of the development, the uh, AI, the big data, I think maybe in the next eight years or ten years, maybe, maybe more than five years, yeah. Okay. Maybe I, I think the real ma market will, uh, will become a real market. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so we got nice range from five years, eight years, and uh, 20 years, and then in the future, right? Um, okay, so my next question is, since we're talking about uh, develop autonomous driving with real person inside is really difficult. So what do you think the key bottleneck right now to for us to get that stage? Because th there are different uh, variety of uh, uh, opinions. So some are saying it's a sensor, right? It's a li LiDAR technology, radar technology, camera. Some are also saying this data issue because we need to create 3D maps. And then um, what do you think, Leo? Start for me again. Um, well, actually, <laughs> I was thinking uh, the answer is just uh, you talk about uh, lidar. You know, all those uh, sensors uh, definitely are the bottleneck, especially lidar, right? Because the lidar used to be the mechanical um, lidar, and uh, now uh, they are trying to develop the uh, the solid state based lidar. Uh, the bunch of uh, companies working in this area, I think they are making uh, good progress. But uh, uh, still, uh, even, you, you know, I used to work for semiconductor, so we know semiconductor, you follow this uh, MERS laws, right? Every two years, two and a half years, you can actually reduce the cost uh, half to half. If they uh, take the solid state approach, I, I think they can uh, greatly reduce the price. Uh, but uh, still, uh, based on what I uh, saw today, uh, to the you know the final price that uh, I think uh, people can uh, or most of us can accept right basically I think just adding maybe 
500 to 1,000 to uh, to the sensor. I think that's a maximum. You uh, need to still, talk about the price, right? Uh, I'm Not talking the about range. the price. Okay. No, no, it's, I think it's still far away. That's why I, I agree with uh, um, you know Mr. Wang. Uh, he talked about uh, those uh, applications, uh, L4 applications uh, in uh, some uh, uh, enclosed area, uh, special cases. Uh, uh, those will definitely uh, work. Uh, like, uh, you know, we basically work on the steel, ba steel camera based uh, application. So uh, we are trying to get something, you know, a fully uh, like self driving uh, solution. Mm -hmm for like, uh, you know, $50 to like $200. So there are many, many uh, applications like uh, those uh, logistic uh, cars, they run really slow. Uh, they can actually take uh, this, this approach. Uh, that will be uh, available much sooner, uh, I think, than LiDAR. Okay, so you think sensor is the key and then there is price barrier, there is accuracy, right? right? And, and also the I think building right. the, the high accuracy 3D map, that's another big issue. That's okay kind of like expensive. Thank you. Tiffany? So, so I think the difference between transporting people versus transporting goods is probably primarily liability issue and just kind of socialization of the, cha of the technology because I think it's more the technology challenges are probably more informed by the specific environment and application that the vehicle is supposed to be used in. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think in general, it's, it's very challenging. The tech, there, are techno there are technological challenges, there are industry challenges, there are integration challenges. So, you know, if I had my engineering team, they could give you a whole laundry list of what are the challenges in terms of the technology. Of course, sensors are definitely one, but I think there, this year in particular, we've seen a lot of innovation in the sensor space, particularly LiDAR. We see a lot of new companies coming up. So people are definitely pushing the envelope in both hardware and software. But there is definitely a next generation kind of iterative process that will need to continue to happen for the next 10, 15 years. And in terms of the software, the biggest challenge would be just Getting getting as many scenarios as possible, getting into as many applications, and 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 sort of running into as many edge case scenarios as you can. Mm -hmm. I think people like a a lot like to talk a lot about. Oh, you spend ten percent of your time working on ninety percent of the challenges or the scenarios, and then the remaining ten percent edge case is very hard to cover, which is true. But I think the metaphor of you know, saying this is a 100% stacked bar or char chart is a little bit misleading because in theory, the, the number of edge case scenarios you can run into are infinite. Mm. So regardless of whether, you know, you're using a human safety driver now or in, in the future use a remote assistance platform, there needs to be some sort of fallback. Um, but going back to your, your question, what are, what are the challenges? So technically, uh, on the technical side, there are improvements to be done, made in, in hardware and software. Uh, so building the brain of the vehicle is, is a challenge in itself and just gathering enough data and, and training your algorithms on, on a number of scenarios, that, that is going to be a process. But then there's also you know, the, the hardware, the, the vehicle side, which, which requires to, which the software needs to be very tightly integrated into. Right. So it, part of the challenge I think is the technology itself, but also the integration, the coming together of these two, of these two traditionally very separate industries. And then the final pillar is just, like we discussed already, kind of the application. Uh, both, both in terms of what are you expecting your vehicle to do, what are, what are the specific challenges that they will need to be able to handle, but also, uh, you know, what's the regulatory environment? Is there infrastructure in place that might be, make it easier or more difficult? So all of those questions kind of need to be addressed and make this super complex. Yeah. Thank you. So I think there are maybe two things I can add to that. One is uh, I agree the sensor uh, is one of the key areas. Uh, our fund investing in one of the uh, uh, CMOS image processing sensor uh, company in Israel. Uh, they produce the um, computer chip basically as the core of the LiDAR. Um, but the key is they can do like four times higher performance but only at a quarter of the price compared to uh, traditionally uh, lighter uh, chips. So the low end of that, for example, can use on the vacuum robot, uh, industry kind of AGVs, those kind of things. Uh, but because the precision is so high, because software, so they can produce a lighter uh, chip uh, with 200 meters detection, but the, the chip only costs about 20 to 30 dollars. 
actually less than twenty dollars, which you think the traditional lighter chip is about uh, you know a few hundred, even on thousands of dollars. So I think those kind of innovation will happen. Uh, so that has been a huge success. We invest in that company, and uh, we see a lot of pickup of the interest in them. Uh, almost all major uh, kind of AI companies are working with them. Um, that's one. Uh, another one, I think, uh, just in terms of uh, challenges, not only for autonomous driving, I think just in general for AI, right? The, the challenge is that AI is very expensive. Um, I think most of the, like Pony, I'm sure, raise a lot of money, and uh, I do spend a lot of money, raise rounds and rounds of money uh, to, you need to have huge AI clusters, supercomputers to do deep learning training. You need to collect data, label data. Those are, uh, you know, cost, costly. You need to have expensive engineers to, who can handle the AI platform and the models. Uh, so I think that's in general just a lot of investment and then you happen to have the long tail of the last mile we just talked about, right? So that combination really, I, I think a lot of companies will have to, to be honest, develop the solution and commercialize that before money run out. <laughs> I think that's the basic uh, economy. Uh, and actually, just not to throw a commercial in here, that's actually one of the reasons I actually changed my job to Deep Brain Chain. Uh, I think most people here probably don't know be, uh, Deep Brain Chain. I, I was the global AI lead for my dear group, my dear group the second largest uh, consumer electronic companies in the world. And before that, I started my own company doing AI consulting for many years. So we have done over 100 real world AI applications and products. But the traditional way of doing AI is you go buy, uh, buy you know, expensive workstations or build clusters with 128, 256 GPUs. Each GPU costs like $5,000, right? And you have expensive team to do the models and all those things. Uh, and then after a year, maybe you're lucky, you develop some models uh, on the data and which can be used in real applications. Most of the companies end up with a paper or something on the shelf, right? Um, so Deep Brain Chain is a company that uses blockchain to connect all the three components, so computing power, models, and data, so you can basically uh, leveraging the idle resources on the blockchain securely uh, at 70% less the cost, right? So basically you can get computing power, you can run them, but the, the cost is cheaper, 70% cheaper than AWS, for example, because some other guy just have the idle GPU power there not being used, right? And you can help people to help you to label data because those people are just eager to earn tokens, right, uh, to help you to label the data rather than you have to hire a data service provider, which is very expensive, but also they may carry your data and sell that in private to some other people, right? So there are a lot of those kind of challenges. I think just in general, it's an AI problem rather than just autonomous driving development. As, as I said, that I don't think the teclo technology is a problem. It's just a matter of time. Uh, I want to talk something about the, the law and the politics because, you know, maybe, for example, the total responsibility, uh, for example, who will be responsible for the, in the driverless car accident? You know, there is no driver, just an uh, owner, yeah? So who will be responsible for that? This also refers to the insurance law, also refers to the tax law. So maybe th there will be a lot of problem from the law angle. So I think that's a problem. Another problem is from politics, you know. For example, if the driverless car will really avoid um, fatalities, so whether, whether the government should uh, prohibit the man driving because you know, when the man, when the man drive, driving, you know, they will, they will have more risks to you know, jeopardize the third parties. So I think that's a really problem. It's uh, okay, it's about morality, yeah? yeah. So I think this, this kind of pressure from law and politics takes away, delay, maybe delay. I, I, but I agree with you, the sensor, the other technology problem will also, you know, is a, uh, is a problem. But I think the law and the politics may be also a factor. Uh, that's, that's your specialty, by the way. I would say Michael is actually an adjunct professor teaching law uh, policies in a university in China. So uh, thanks for the input. I would just add one thing. It's kind of funny when you see the news when there's one accident of Tesla killing one person. Uh, and there's a lot of issues of Tesla have done something so terrible. But there are so many cars driving on the road, BMW, I Mercedes. Know. People kill people all the time. But I machine know. cannot kill people at one time even. I know. It's a, a human against the machine, right? Um, okay, so we don't have much time, so one last question uh, would be, um, so we heard you, you guys talking about the bottleneck actually involved capital, data, you know, chip development, all different things, policy. So then the natural question would be, 
in this particular vertical, do you think it's a winner take all, or do you think there are still chances for small startups in different particular area? Um, yeah, uh, I think it, uh, in this space won't be uh, one winner take all because it's very, it will be very similar to the car industry, right? Or any hardware industry, you look at the, at the end, at the beginning there's many, many companies are competing. Mm -hmm. But even at the end, there's still like a three, five big companies, right? There's no like a one car company uh, can take win, over. Winners <laughs> take out, so yeah. it's the yeah, plural, yeah. right? Yeah, so yeah. Few, few big players then take it out. Because there are talks about Tesla, Google, Apple, and other play players because they have tremendous amount of data. They have a lot of capital. Right, um, right. So yeah. they can go much longer than the startups. So the question is really about is that really uh, uh, the large players um, will dominate and eventually taking, uh, acquire other startups or uh -huh. startup have the opportunity to become right. at the same level with those Yeah, I players. think it will be very similar to uh, car industry or semiconductor industry. It will become a whole ecosystem. Uh, so at the beginning, uh, startups, they have a more chance, but even at the end, as long as they provide the kind of like a, uh, one, maybe something in a niche market or one key component, uh, they can still survive. But uh, it will be dominated for the whole system. It will be dominated by just a few, very few uh, big companies. So, so I work for a startup, so I have to believe that there is, <laughs> that there is hope. Uh, but in, in general, yeah, I think now we do see um, an emergence of an ecosystem because it's a very complex uh, technology just on the, so not even just on the software side, but even on the vehicle side. Uh, and then you have kind of mobility services and things like that popping up as well that are all related to smart mobility and autonomous driving. So I think now we do see an emergence um, of this ecosystem, whether or not there's further consolidation consolidation, you know, 20, 30 years down the road is, is still an open, open question. Uh, but I think there's also another aspect, uh, which is ge geography, uh, because this is really a global market. So especially when, we, when you think about countries like China or, or, any, or any country for that matter where, where data can be quite sensitive, uh, you know, we, we, it's, it's kind of goes back to the uh, think locally, act globally. Uh, so I think there is going to be some geographic specific companies that might monopolize or uh, do well in certain markets, but the global market is, is, is very large indeed. I think my opinion is a little bit different. I, uh, that may not be um, a pleasant message to hear for a lot of people. I, I think there will be a effect of winners take a big part of it, not, not, not to take all. Uh, because for the car, unfortunately, a car is a combination of many things, right? Not only the techno the software, but also the car has to be the car, the brand, the shape. Uh, you know, that's why people are saying the for 100 years there's no successful car company other than Tesla, right? And the sh I think the Chevy Bolt last year was a classic example. It drive more mileage, it's pure GV, uh, EV car, but you rarely see Chevy Bolt since last December once it hit the market, right? Especially in the, in the valley. So I think when people buy cars, they, they will look for a lot of other factors than other than just the autonomous driving. Uh, so I think that's the factor. Uh, I do think that a lot of companies will be successful in this area when they really can differentiate themselves rather than just generic competing in the brain, right? The, 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 the brain of the car, the, 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 the big, AI models, but there are many, many parts around uh, the whole system, ecosystem, like uh, Tiffany said. I think companies, smart startups can be successful, but it, I would suggest them to be really, really have a competitive advantage in a narrow and focused area rather than just try to all build a big AI model, try to get data. I, I don't think the whole world will need more than a few of those big car brains. Uh, you know, just if you look at the, uh, the, in the car, the, the audio, uh, the voice control system is pretty clear nuance, and now Sun Sun is taking it all almost right. It's rising up. There are not more than a handful of companies who the, which does voice AI in the car, right? So so I think the car brain, the autonomous driving will be very similar. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I think winner take all because you know maybe there are one or two companies 
but uh, an, 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 a lot of programs and companies will go to die or, or re reborn because maybe they will focus on the big data, for just become the supplier for, the, for the, those one or two companies. That's my point, yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you everyone, and thank you for our panelists. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.